Okay, now uh, let's do a second example. This is going to be just a slight variation on the first example, but be enough of a variation that things will work differently in a kind of an important way. And uh, before going into this, notice that I redrew the, uh, the little diagram down there. It looks a little bit better. Not great, but a little better than it did before. And we're going to use this diagram uh, for the second example as well. So let's say our second example is going to be f of x is 2x if x is less than or equal to 1, and it's going to be 2x minus 2 if x is larger than 1. And let's still let x bar be uh, 1 and let a be 2. So notice that uh, we still have a real function. The x's are real numbers and the values are real numbers, real valued. Uh, in fact, it's the same function as before to the left of 1, but to the left of x bar, but then to the right, it's uh, not quite the same. So let's actually take the diagram that we used before and let's just change the diagram to actually reflect this function. So let's take this part of the graph off. And so now this is the graph of f to the left of x bar equals 1. And its value at x bar equals 1 is 2. So let's just note that this is 2. And then and the epsilon, I'm going to worry about the epsilon in a moment. For now, you can just <laughs> imagine the epsilon's not quite there yet, but it'll get there. And so the, uh, and let me get down so I can actually draw this diagram a little better here. So here, the graph goes through here like this. So this is now the graph of the function f. Uh, it's, it's, it's the same as before over here, and then it's, we have a discontinuity, and then it goes up here again with the slope 2. And so let's just indicate this is the graph of f. And so, of course, we're going to find here that the function is not continuous at x bar, <laughs> we hope, and uh, we're going to find that the limit as x goes to x bar actually doesn't exist because it seems to be different if I go in from the left than if I go in from the right. And so all those things are going to show up here. So let's say, let's suppose epsilon here is 1 and let's suppose, let's let delta be 1 half one-half of epsilon like we had before, actually, but I'm taking a specific epsilon here, equal to 1. Then, that's the case. Let's note that if uh, x is between x bar, which is in the case here is 1, and x bar plus delta, that implies, and of course notice that this is 1, and this is 3 halves, 1 plus a half. If x is between x bar and x bar plus delta, then you can see that now we are here And the value of f is down here less than 2 minus 1. a is 2, epsilon is 1, so this is 1. And I guess this is 3, although we're not going to need that, at least not right now. So this says that the f of x is farther from uh, a is 2, than epsilon. So this says the absolute value of f of x minus a 
is bigger than one. It's greater than one, which is epsilon. So we don't have uh, we don't have a delta that makes the distance between f of x and a less than epsilon. We have a delta that makes it bigger than epsilon. Moreover, choosing a smaller delta isn't going any other delta. But choose it, certainly choosing a smaller delta, which is typically what we have to do to make things work, choosing a smaller delta isn't going to do any good because that just squeezes this interval down smaller. And if anything, they makes things worse because f of x gets farther from, uh, is forced farther from a, which is 2. So there, it seems clear then that uh, uh, let's even say it this way. Let's say that, therefore, we don't have limit as x goes to x bar, which is 1, of f of x is a, and since a is f of x bar, x bar is 1, f of 1 is 2. Since a is f of x bar, it says we don't have limit of f of x equals f of x bar. f is not continuous at x bar equals 1. So continuity fails here for this f at this x bar. Uh, okay, so we've seen that uh, the how it can how we can fail to have the limit of a function even exist, how we can have it fail to be some particular value. But now let's note, and in fact, let's uh, do that. Here, I guess, we may have to go back over here and use some of this space. But let's say However, notice that if for any epsilon greater than zero, we do choose delta equal a half epsilon, like we did in the first example, then it's the case that for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, namely this delta here, such that if If x is bigger than x minus delta, x bar minus delta, I should have said, if x is bigger than x bar minus delta and smaller than x bar, that implies that the absolute value of f of x minus a is less than epsilon after all. So using a different color here, this is describing what's happening to the left of x bar, whereas this was describing what's happening to the right of x bar. So, and in fact, since I have this in pink, let's actually put this in pink here. This is what's happening for x is bigger than x bar up to delta, and this is what's happening for x less than x bar down to x minus delta. And so here it turns out that everything seems to work just fine to the left or coming into x bar from the left. It doesn't work so well coming in from the right. So in fact, 
this is a definition of the limit of f of x from the left. So let's write it this way. The limit as x goes to x bar with a little minus for a superscript. You make a slightly larger minus. Okay, that's the way it's typically written. The limit of f of x as x approaches x bar from the negative direction, from the left, is a if this statement up here. And here, let me put the whole statement in this color because I want to emphasize that this limit of f of x as x comes in from the left is a, if all of this is true, where we have this orange part here being the part that specifies we're coming in from the left. And it's also the case, and we say f uh, is continuous from the left, we actually use that terminology, from the left at x bar if the limit as x goes to x bar from the left of f of x is f of x bar. So now we have a definition like the definition we gave for the limit of a function as x approaches x bar, but now it's a definition just for the limit as x approaches x bar from the left. And of course, we can give exactly the same definition uh, for approaching uh, x bar from the right. And so let's write that down over here. So we'll take this off and we will write that definition here. And that would be the limit as x goes to x bar plus from the positive side of f of x is a if, and I'll write this out here, this is if for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that, we're going from the right, so this will be x bar, x has to be bigger than x bar and smaller than x bar plus delta, that implies f of x minus a is less than epsilon and f is continuous from the right at x bar if the limit as x goes to x bar from the right of f of x is f of x bar. So there's just a few more things that we want to say about uh, these notions. Let's first of all say that an alternative notation for this, uh, let me also use a different color here, and I guess uh, we're using orange over here. <laughs> so let's say an alternative notation for this that is sometimes used is the limit as x increases toward x bar of f of x. So instead of using the x bar minus uh, notation, we just use the upward arrow. And over here, since I used pink from the right, this would be, uh, we can write this sometimes as the limit as x decreases toward x bar of f of x. That's one thing to say. It's just that there's an alternative notation that people use for this idea. And then I think another thing we can say, and I don't know that we even need to write this down, but this is kind of obvious, and so, oh, actually, let me put in pink over here, just the analog of what I had over here. And so that would have been this 
That corresponds to the pink part down here. And let's put this whole thing in pink here, just as an analog of what we did over here in orange. Um, and so, uh, as I said, there's one remark here that I think is obvious. Uh, I guess it would have been obvious even if I don't mention it, but let me mention it. I don't think I need to write it down. And that is that we, well, I guess this isn't, well, yeah, I guess it is. It's a remark. And that is that it seems pretty clear then that the, in fact, I will write this down. Let me just write this down as a remark. I, I said I wasn't going to, but here I am doing it. Uh, the limit as x goes to x bar of f of x is some number a if and only if the limit from the left is a and the limit from the right is a. So I said I'm writing it down, so I guess maybe I'll do it. And in fact, I'll even go so far as to write it down uh, in the two colors. How's that? The limit as x uh, increases to x bar of f of x equals the limit as x decreases to x bar of f of x equals, <laughs> using all the colors on this one, equals a. So the limit is a if and only if, of course, the limit from the left and the limit from right are both a and they're equal. And if they're not equal, even if one of them is equal to a, as it was in our example, because in the example, the limit from the left is equal to a, Maybe I didn't actually write that down here. I just wrote the definition. Oh, no, it's over here. I said here the, ooh, did I get this backwards? Uh, no, this is fine. Uh, the limit from the left is A. The limit from the right is uh, not A. We have a definition here, but we already showed up here that the limit from the right in this example is not A. In fact, let's point out that the limit from the right in this example, then, the limit as x uh, approaches x bar from the right of f of x is actually 0. Because as we come in from the right, we can see that we're getting closer and closer to 0 here. So here we have the limit does exist. The limit, the limit doesn't exist, but the limit from the left exists and is 2, and the limit from the right exists and it's 0, but they're unequal. So this limit doesn't exist. And of course, the same thing for continuity. We would have as a remark that f is continuous at x bar if and only if uh, f is continuous from the right and f is continuous from the left. Both. Obvious, I think. Okay, so um, I think that's all we need to do today with our with our notions of continuity of a function at a point. What we're going to do in part two of the lecture then is to look at the idea of the continuity of a function, not just at a point in the domain, but a continuity over the whole domain, continuity on the whole set. Uh, the whole set, I think it was capital X that we used for the domain here. So that's what we'll do in part two. So it's clearly going to build on what we did here in part one. So that's it for a part one of the lecture, and we'll be back for part two. Okay.